Hi, I'm Rena Buckstein. I'm from Sunnybrook Odette Cancer Center, and um, I chaired the AML and MDS session at CHC 2017. We had three speakers. Uh, Mikhail Sakaris from the Cleveland Clinic talked about um, how to manage azacitidine failures. Um, he focused a lot on azacitidine failures in lower risk MDS patients because that comprises the larger population in the US. And he talked about different um, agents. First of all, the survival in lower risk MDS patients after aza failure is about 17 months. And in higher risk MDS patients, it's four and a half to six months. So for the low risk MDS patients, he walked us through various treatment options. Um, response to lenalidomide based on some work that they've done is uh, very um, disappointing with an overall response rate of only 11%. He talked about drugs like rigacertib for relapsed uh, disease or progressive disease after AZA in higher risk MDS patients. The randomized trial um, initially was a negative study, but in subgroup analysis, certain populations did appear to benefit. So there is a new phase three study ongoing asking the qu question if rigacertib provides a survival benefit in a subgroup of high risk MDS patients. He talked about inacidib. Uh, the IDH2 um, inhibitor, IDH1 inhibitor um, that uh, is applicable to about 5% of MDS patients. And uh, in, in, they're in a, in a sub-study of a larger myeloid cancer study uh, testing this drug, there seems to be very promising activity, about 40% response rate in azacitidine failures. So I think we can expect to see that being developed further. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, he, his, in his own practice, he might use um, yeah, antithymocyte globulin in some patients who have uh, m uh, more than one cytopenia and, uh, and are physically fit to tolerate it. Um, and for higher risk patients, anecdotally, he, he says he sometimes will consider induction chemotherapy. But the bottom line is that there's a huge paucity of treatments right now for higher risk MDS patients, um, but many trials are ongoing. Uh, Andre Shu talked about acute myeloid leukemia, the nuts and bolts of acute myeloid leukemia, focusing only on induction chemotherapy. He walked us through all the different uh, rationale um, for why we use uh, donorubicin 60 milligrams per meter squared, as well as cytarabine 200 milligrams per meter squared uh, for the seven plus three backbone. And then he talked about some new agents that are finally uh, showing an impact in the management of AML and actually improving survival. Uh, one includes a, um, a myelotarg, an anti-CD33 monoclonal antibody with, with calichomycin tag to it. This was initially taken off the market uh, in, in, um, less, in 2010, I believe, uh, because of perceived increased toxicity but uh, in redesign of the molecule and its different dosing schedule, recent trials suggest that there's actually a survival benefit by adding it to 7 plus 3, and it just recently got FDA approval. Uh, he talked about a molecule called CPX351, which is a liposomal cytarabine donorubicin drug um, that has particular activity in therapy-related AML or AML with MDS-associated changes. Um, and a significant uh, increase in survival in, um, at both two years and four years. And this drug also recently got FDA approval. So some new drugs to look forward to. And of course, uh, the FLT3 inhibitor, mitostorin, has uh, just gotten FDA approval in the summer for patients with FLT3 mutated AML and will become now the backbone uh, treatment in combination with 7 plus 3 for um, AML with mutated FLT3. And then Michael Rao from Queen's University uh, talked about the importance and relevance of somatic mutations in MDS, how prevalent they are, how prognostic they are, and, um, and how they have also been incorporated into the WHO classification, specifically patients who have SF3 beta-1 mutations are now considered to have ring sideroblast subtype MDS, even if they don't have the 15% ring sideroblast cut point. 
th those patients in particular have an excellent prognosis, uh, and anyone else with other mutations um, actually tends to have an inferior prognosis, and the more mutations you have, the, uh, the worse the overall survival is for MDS patients. Um, work is, being, uh, is underway to incorporate somatic mutation testing into clinical prognostic models, sort of like IPSSR molecular, and uh, Mikhail Sakaris talked about some work that they've done at the Cleveland Clinic that shows that it is superior to the IPSSR uh, in treated MDS patients because the IPSSR is not use useful uh, dynamically and certainly not for treated patients. Um, and uh, Michael Rao also talked about the importance of clonal measuring the clonal dynamics within an MDS patient and how it changes over time and how it may also be useful for predicting response to therapy. He highlighted P53 and how it has a negative prognostic value in patients undergoing allogeneic stem cell transplant um, and, uh, and anticipates and hopes that somatic mutation testing will become um, a standard of care in the management of MDS patients and be measured uh, dynamically in the future.